latest finance and market news, we're joined now by Suzanne Haddon, who is the Managing Director of BFG Financial Services. Good morning to you, Suzanne. Okay, so as Fauzia was just talking about with Dr Danielle McMullen, we've got this path um, out for New South Wales. More details of the plan once that state reaches the 70% vaccination mark. What do you make of this plan to reopen from a business point of view? Well, one of the good things about having a roadmap is it's giving businesses the opportunity to plan because they need to be thinking about the vaccination rates for their staff, what staff can actually come in to work for them, but also what products and produce and start taking bookings. What's really good about the roadmap is that it has an objective measure for when it will start. Because as you've said, it's the 70% fully vaccinated and it's the Monday after we hit that. And that gives business some confidence. But it doesn't deal with the broader issue of closed borders because we still have difficulty with labour moving around the country. We have difficulty with booking for holidays and Christmas coming up. And there's also a very delicate balance for the governments, I think, around the COVID payments. Think about the $750 some people are receiving because they can't work at the moment. If that goes, if that's cut off too quickly, that will be very detrimental for them for financial hardship and confidence. But if it goes on too long, it could be a disincentive for people to get back out into the workforce, mm. particularly, say, retail and agriculture. Mm. So, as I said, a delicate balance. When you talk about the importance of a plan for businesses, what are the implications of that then for the areas that don't have a plan as of yet, particularly those in lockdown, like the ACT and like um, Victoria? I think it makes it a lot more challenging for business because you can't just open a business in most cases the next day because the governments have eased the lockdowns. We need to build confidence with businesses that we're going to come out of this lockdown in a safe fashion with still some businesses will need that financial support, absolutely. So I think for the places that don't have a roadmap, hopefully the New South Wales project will be one they'll embrace to help their businesses, help their communities get some surety as to what's going to happen in the future. Suzanne, the fear of the unknown is mm, a big concern. Absolutely. The, the, it is hoped that once things start to reopen, the economy will bounce back again. We have seen that in the past with the end of past lockdowns. But things are different this time. Yes. Not only is it that we don't have JobKeeper, we have got other support payments, but we haven't had JobKeeper, but also those states that are in lockdown now won't be re-entering a society that is COVID zero. Um, mm. We'll be re-entering a society that is, quote, living with COVID. COVID. That's what the authorities keep um, keep saying. How is that likely to factor into the economic recovery? Well, it's expected that the current lockdown situations will slow the recovery, but not derail it. That's the view of the Reserve Bank. Because as you say, we're coming out of lockdowns into a living with COVID environment. Where the concern is, is what effect will that have on consumer behaviour? There is massive savings in households at the moment. It's expected to reach almost $200 billion by Christmas. Just in July, $25 billion were saved. But will consumers have the confidence to make bookings, to start spending, to be out in the community if we have still cases of living with COVID? There's also the big concern about actually a supply issue because it may not be about that you want to spend, that you've got pent up demand, goods might not be able to be accessed. And it's going to be a case of for Christmas, for example, people will probably want to start thinking about what they need to spend now because they may not have access to the products that they want because a lot of businesses are having difficulty stocking their shelves, particularly if they're importing, mm. because we have quite a lot of a delay in the delivery of products. Try booking to get uh, some things like a couch or, or a, a fridge or things. It is quite difficult. But whether consumers will feel confident to draw on those savings 
is the big unknown. Just finally, Suzanne, we've got some of the regions opening up uh, in Victoria and also parts of New South Wales as well. What impact does that have on the national economy? Well, any easing of lockdowns that can be, be done safely are crucial, but the regions have quite an impact on the uh, economy. When you think about New South Wales regions, for example, they contribute about a third to the New South Wales economy and by default about 10% to the Australian economy. Mm -hmm. So them opening up or partially like Victoria is very important. But they have some challenges. We've already spoken about labour shortages and skills shortages, and certainly the regions are experiencing. I'm pretty confident for those of us in lockdown in Sydney, we'll be very keen to make bookings to go out to the regions. The issue may be whether they're desperate to have us, particularly as we come into a living with COVID environment. So. I also would stress that I think people need to book their holidays, to book in the regions as early as possible, because I think the demand will be significant. Suzanne Haddon, it's always great to have you on. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Thanks, Joanna.